Hi everyone, I'm Anjana Pereira. Today I'm going to present our paper, Defect Prediction Guided Search Based Software Testing. The authors of the paper are Aldi Daliti, Marcel Berman, and Burak Turhan. And we all are from Faculty of Information Technology at Monash University. SPST techniques are very effective at achieving high code coverage. Sometimes they can cover more code than manually written tests. But is high code coverage alone sufficient to find the maximum number of bugs? Well, Shamshiri et al. studied the bug detection performance of Eversuite, a state-of-the-art SPST tool, and they found that Eversuite could only find 23% of the bugs from the defect OJ dataset. Furthermore, they used only 100% branch coverage as guidance for SBST. So we hypothesized that we can improve the likelihood of finding bugs by SBST by informing the search process of the defective areas in the code and focusing the test generation to such areas. By doing that, we tell SBST to stop spending search resources on covering non-buggy code and spend more resources on covering buggy code to increase the chances of finding bugs. We developed a novel approach called Defect Prediction Guided SBST, or in short, SBST DPG. Here you can see an overview of our approach. In this approach, we use a defect predictor that works at class level, which gives defect scores, or in other words, probability of defectiveness for each class in a project. Then a module called Budget Allocation Based on Defect Scores, or in short, BADS, allocates time budget to each of these classes based on these defect scores given by the defect predictor. This way, we give more search resources, in this case, the time budget, to the defective classes in the project. Finally, SBST searches for test cases for each of these classes by spending the allocated time budget. Let's have a look at the first module, which is the defect predictor. We use SURE as the defect predictor, which estimates defect scores based on the change history of classes. SHOA estimates the defect score for each class by using a time-weighted risk formula. In particular, SHOA uses three metrics that have shown to be effective at producing defect predictions. Those are revisions, bug fixes, and changes by new authors. At high level, SHOA follows this rule. Recent changes to a class are likely to introduce new faults. Recent bug fixes to a class are likely to introduce new faults. Recent changes to a class by new developers are likely to introduce new faults. I would also like to mention that other defect predictors which uses uh, different features proposed in the literature would also be suitable for our task. The second module is called budget allocation based on defect scores or in short BADS. BADS takes the defect scores as input and decides on how to allocate the available time budget to each class based on these scores, producing time budgets as the output. In general, BADS follows this intuitive rule, that is, more time budget to highly likely to be defective classes than uh, to the less likely to be defective classes. So, in order to understand how BADS allocates time budgets to these classes, let's have a look at this example. The defect scores distribution shown in this histogram is a good example of the usual defect score distribution by a defect predictor. The x-axis on the histogram denotes the defect scores assigned for the classes in the project, where a defect score of one represents the highest likely to be buggy class. The y-axis represents the number of classes in each defect score bucket, or in other words, the frequency. We can see there are only a few number of highly likely to be defective classes in the project, according to the defect predictor. These are rounded by the red square on the screen. We can be sure that actual buggy classes, or the actual buggy class, is more likely to be in these classes. Therefore, we need to allocate a large time budget for this small number of classes in order to get, uh, increase the chances of finding the bug. 
to do that, use an exponential function in batch to allocate time budgets. In particular, exponential function highly favors the budget allocation for few highly likely to be defective classes. And uh, it discriminates the budget allocation for the less likely to be defective classes. The third module in our approach is SBST. We use Eversuite as the SBST tool, which is the state of the art. And we use Dynamosa as the search algorithm for the SBST technique, which is the state of the art search algorithm. We evaluate our approach in terms of its efficiency in finding bugs and effectiveness uh, in revealing unique bugs. To do that, we formulate two research questions. The first one is, is SBST DPG more efficient in finding bugs compared to the state of the art? And the second one is, does SBST DPG find more unique bugs? A unique bug is a bug that is only detected by one approach, but not the other. And we consider these bugs are harder to find. Here are the results from our empirical evaluation. For the baseline, we use the current state of the art SBST algorithm or Dynamosa, in other words, with equal time budget allocation. And we call it SBST no DPG, or in other words, SBST without defect prediction guidance. We use 434 real bugs from the defects 4J data set. We did experiments for two total time budgets, 15 seconds per class and 30 seconds per class. We consider 30 seconds per class is an adequate time budget and 15 seconds per class is a tight time budget in a resource constrained environment. Please note that even though these time budgets may seem very small, when we factor the number of classes in a project into the equation, the total time budget can be as many as eight or 10 hours. Finally, to account for randomness in genetic algorithm, we repeat the experiments for 20 runs. And we do this for the each approach, SBST DPG and SBST no DPG. And to check for statistical significance of the differences and the effect size, we employed two-tailed non-parametric uh, man whitney u test and Waga and Delany's A statistic. On the left-hand side of the slide, the box plot shows the number of bugs found in 20 runs by each approach for the two time budgets. 15 seconds per class and 30 seconds per class. The table on the right hand side of the uh, slide provides more details, uh, such as the mean uh, and the medium number of bugs found by each approach for each time budget, and the p values and a statistic or the effect size. We can see that at 15 seconds per class time budget, our approach finds on average 17.5 more bugs than the baseline with a p-value less than 0 0.0001 and effect size of 0.94. Therefore, we can say SBST DPG is significantly more efficient than SBST no DPG when they are given a tight time budget in a usual resource constraint scenario. In contrast, the number of bugs found by uh, the two approaches at 30 seconds per class is quite small, uh, similar or closer. But we can see our approach finds more bugs than the baseline with an effect size for uh, 0.67. Therefore, we can say when there is sufficient time budget, SBST DPG is more effective than SBST no DPG 67% of the time. In the second research question, we are interested in unique bugs. So what is unique bug again? A unique bug is a bug that is only detected by one approach, but not the other. We consider these bugs are harder to find. This table provides a summary of the bug finding results at 15 seconds per class for the two approaches, SBST DPG and SBST no DPG. We can see the number of unique bugs found by each approach in the third column, which is highlighted in the red square. where SBSD DPG finds 35 unique bugs compared to 14 unique bugs found by the SBSD no DPG. The rightmost column in the table shows the number of bugs found by, uh, uh, number of bugs found more often by each approach. If one approach finds a bug more times in 20 runs 
Then the other approach we call that approach is robust in finding that bug. There are 127 such bugs found by the SBSD DPG and SBSD no DPG found only 47 bugs more times than the SBSD DPG. And we also similar results at 30 seconds per class as well. Therefore, we can say the superior performance of SBSD DPG is supported by both its capability of finding new bugs, which are not exposed by the baseline, and the robustness of the approach. We make two contributions in this research. First, we develop a novel approach that combines defect prediction and SBSD to improve the bug detection capability of SBSD by focusing the search more towards the defective areas in software. Second, we perform an empirical evaluation involving 434 real bugs from open source Java projects that demonstrates the efficiency, efficiency of our proposed solution. Also, uh, this empirical evaluation took us um, roughly around 35,000 hours. In conclusion, we would like to highlight these two key findings from our research. In a resource constrained environment, when given a tight time budget, SBSD's uh, BPG or our approach is significantly more efficient than the state of the art with a large effect size. Also, the superior performance of SBSD DPG is supported by its ability to find more unique bugs, which otherwise remain undetected. We identified three future works from our research. First one is employing a defect predictor which uses different features other than change history related metrics to produce predictions. The second one is validating SBSD DPG against other bugs datasets. Actually, I didn't describe the third one in the presentation, although you can find more details about this in our paper. In brief, what we want to do with the third future work is to adapt an appropriate test suite minimization strategy to reduce the test suite size while maintaining the bug detection performance of SBSD. Finally, I would like to summarize the presentation with the following key points from our research. First, we hypothesize that we can improve the likelihood of finding bugs by informing the search process of the likely to be defective areas in the software system. Then we introduced an OWL approach called SBSD DPG that combines class level defect prediction and SBSD to efficiently find bugs in a resource constrained environment. Through empirical evaluation, we find that in a resource constrained environment, when given a tight time budget, SBSD DPG or our approach is significantly more efficient than the state of the art. Also, the superior performance of our approach is supported by both its capability of finding unique bugs and the robustness of the approach. 